What's up, Gremliners? We're back with another home DIY project. I'm standing in the middle of an empty room. We're gonna replace this carpet with some vinyl plank flooring. So the first thing you wanna do is obviously start with an empty room. So what I'm gonna be doing is start pulling the carpet out from whatever corner lets me do it the easiest. And because of the pandemic, we probably all have masks sitting around the house. So mask up, because you don't wanna breathe the dust of all this dirty carpet. There's no seam here at the closet, so I'm actually gonna pull that carpet out of the closet first and just pull it out into the room so I can roll it up. I lied, there was a seam. So here's the closet carpet. Now we're gonna go back to tearing out the other corner. And the tack strips that hold the edge of the carpet down, you gotta be really careful because they are very sharp. One already poked me, tearing out the carpet. I guess you should probably wear gloves. All right, the carpet came out pretty easy, but now we're just gonna take these rolls of carpet right up to the curb because it is trash day in a couple days. Rolls of carpet are out, now we are just going to get this padding out of here. Same way, just start ripping it out. There is gonna be uh, staples holding it down, but we're just gonna rip it out to get it out quickly, and then we'll go around and remove the staples after that. We got the padding all pulled out and rolled up. We're gonna take that out, and we're now left with the subfloor. With all the foam and carpet removed, it's now just hard floor. Pro tip, get yourself some knee pads. Next thing we gotta do is pull all the staples that we're holding the padding down. And they are all along the edge along the tack strip as well as some throughout the middle wherever there was a seam between two pieces of padding. We'll be fixing the squeaking too. We got all the staples pulled, at least all the ones that we found. Now, once we start vacuuming, we might find some more, so there's always some you might miss. So we're gonna run the vacuum right now wherever we pulled the staples, just to start cleaning up some of the dust and debris before we start pulling the tack strips. And they do make specialty tools for all of this kind of stuff. I was just using needle nose pliers and a standard screwdriver to pop the screws out. They do make scrapers and removal tools, things like that, that are specially designed for this type of work, but. I just use what I have because I'm not gonna go spend money on things that I don't use all the time. Now we're gonna pull these tack strips out. You can see here there are little nails holding them in. So you just wanna hammer in a pry bar and start popping them out. And like I said before, they are sharp. They have little points sticking up to grab the carpet edges. So maybe wear gloves or just be very careful. We got all the tack strips cleaned up here. All the long pieces, I basically leaned on the edge of the bin here and stepped on it to snap it in half to, to fit. But you need something hard to put it in because if you put it in plastic bags, all the little nails are just gonna rip through the bag. So I'm just gonna put in this bin here till trash day and then either tape these up into bundles and put them up by the trash or dump them into the actual trash bin. Next thing we're gonna do is vacuum again. I like to vacuum in between pretty much every step of any dirty job, uh, one that creates a lot of dust, just to limit how much dust is stirring around, how much I'm breathing. Right, here's another good reason why you should vacuum in between everything. So I just hit a little staple here as I'm running the vacuum around the edge it hits something hard. So you can find what you missed by vacuuming frequently. Next thing we are looking for are nails that are sticking up above the surface of the wood. So they don't cause any problems with the flooring install. So we got our hammer and a nail set if we need it. Shouldn't need this, but just in case. And we're basically going to hammer any nail heads down further than the wood surface, at least flush. 
Next up, taking care of the squeaks. The only squeak in this room is right here, where these two pieces of wood meet. It's a seen squeak. If you walk anywhere around the rest of the floor, typically the squeaks are at your seams, so you really want to check them good. I just heard a little bit, there we go. There's a little bit, again, at the seams, because you have a little bit of movement. we have no squeaks this was the problem area and then over here was a little squeak and right here was a little squeak so if the squeaks are where there is a joist underneath for the screws to go in tight that is very helpful but sometimes you got a squeak in between joists what I do is hard angle tow it one to the other so it is a very hard angle, like almost straight, because you got to catch the edge of this other board here, because there's no joist for it to go through. And if you go too straight, it's going to blow out the bottom and not grab on anything. So you got to tow it in hard, and that will join the two. And you do flake off some layers here a little bit, but um, as long as your screw head is flush with the floor, it's not going to be a problem. And now we're ready to, that's right, vacuum again. Before we run that vacuum, I did want to go over the floor with a little scraper. As I was vacuuming earlier, I did hit a couple of high spots. So you basically want to scrape any globs of spackle or loose fibers of wood, anything that protrudes enough that you can feel. Uh, it's like a little bump because you will see that in the vinyl plank flooring pushing up. Uh, you know, if you lay down and look at the floor, you'll see a little bump or whatever the shape is that's going over you in the seams. Uh, you can see they sanded these seams. See how it's lighter where the seams are. So uh, I'm not worried about the seams. Some people might want to put a flooring patch in there to fill that and feather it out before you install it. The flooring I got already has underlayment under a thick layer of padding attached to the hard flooring. So that is going to take up some of uh, some unevenness in the flooring. So you don't have to go too crazy with perfectly level or anything like that. But you do want to get the high spots and bumps, things like that, that you can possibly see once you put the new flooring in. It's the next morning and it took about three and a half hours to do what I did up to this point right now. We are all set up with the vinyl plank that we are putting in. These are full size pieces. I have the miter saw set up in the garage because it is snowing outside today. So cut half pieces here and quarter pieces just to stagger the seams. So when we start install, you're going to start with a full size board and we've already got some cutting to do around that frame. The next row, we will start with a short piece so you can stagger these seams and start creating a pattern as you go. And we'll run all the way across the floor into here and start the second row and just work our way to this side of the room. And ideally you would want to do all your cutting outside of the room because it is going to create a lot of dust. Although my, my straight cuts I'm doing downstairs is the boxes of planks are already down there. So I'm cutting before I bring it up all of my jigsaw work. All of that cutting I'm doing in the room at the other side opposite of what I'm working. And eventually I'm going to get close to that area and I'm going to have to just vacuum and move everything over to the new flooring. So uh, I don't have any space upstairs because of where I put everything from this room. There's literally no space for me to do cutting up here on this floor. So I'm just going to do it in the room and clean up my mess as I go. Some of the tools I have here are specific for this type of flooring install. This is very cheap from Amazon, but it works. It's effective. It comes with these little shins here, the spacing, your first rows, little hammer, hard end, soft end, puller bar. So it's got padding here because once you're ready to get in a tight corner, basically hook that onto the edge and then use the hammer smack this in to pull that in tight to the row behind it. And there's a block here for running along the edge and hammering the hammer things in tight as you go. So you'll be seeing all that stuff in motion as I get started. But these shims here, right, just tape along the wall. 
where you're starting uh, to give yourself a little bit of gap. I am using quarter round myself. Some people remove the baseboards here and either replace with something new, or if you remove these carefully, you can reuse your baseboard as well. I'd rather put a little money into the quarter round and save myself some time from having to remove all the baseboards. So these shims here, you basically tape along your baseboards, give yourself a little gap because it is a floating floor. So you want it to have some gaps on three of the four sides to be able to move with your house as it settles during the seasons. They are taped along here. And the one issue we had was the framing of the door. The trim actually was lower than the casing here. So I did just take a chisel and chisel out the bottom. There's a little piece sticking out. Um, because you gotta have enough clearance, obviously, for your planks to slide underneath all of that. All right, I've got that plank in place, tied up against those shims, and I've got this board snugged right there and lined up underneath the door frame here. So I can now mark where I want to make my cuts with the jigsaw. And then we will measure from the edge here out to give us our measurement this way. And that measurement was two and a half inches. So we measured that off, took a straight edge, marked our lines, and now we're ready to cut with the jigsaw. When I use my jigsaw, I use a metal blade. because it's fine tooth, so you get a little bit of a cleaner cut. And as you saw, it does fly through this material like butter, so be a little careful. All right, now we got that piece in. Slid it right underneath that door jam cleanly. So we're gonna continue on down that way. And then start our second row. Here, got all the rows in, cut around the air vent there, and we are now at the point where we're at the end of the wall here. So that's 23 and a half inches. One thing I wanted to point out is when you take your measurement, measure on top of this little lip here. You gotta remember to account for the overlap in the planking when you're taking your measurement. If you measure off of this bottom lip here, and then measure off the top of the plank, you're gonna be off this little bit of measurement here. So make sure you're consistent in what you're measuring and accounting for the overlap in the planking. This is the lip that overlaps the plank that's on the floor. So we measure from there to 23 and a half and snug it into place. Perfect gap. All 
right, just giving an update here. We've got the closet all finished and the spacing of the boards actually worked out. So there's a little gap there, but the quarter round will cover that. So that's done. And I want to show this. I'm basically going to cut a piece of the plank, like a puzzle, and glue that in right at that point there because of how tight this spacing is to be able to stick a piece. There's no way to stick a piece in there on an angle. Uh, so I will take a razor knife and cut off these ellipses here and then measure and cut a piece and just put a little construction glue and slide it under, push it down. Good to go. We are moving right along and now we are just open flooring and nothing to cut around. You want to basically just establish some kind of pattern. So with the spacing of these boards, I'm doing a 13 inch piece here and then three full length pieces and then a 13 at the end. And then the next row after that is a full length piece going all the way down and ending with a 26 inch piece at that end. And then the next row, this piece here is 26, basically opposite of the row it's matching up to. And then start over again with a 13 and a 13 at the other end, and then just repeat it every third row. So you get established some kind of pattern with the seams. All right, I just moved everything around, vacuumed up, because I was approaching my cutting area here. So now I'm working over the new floor and we can just finish up right along here. So I just marked this next piece, 26 inches. That's the next one to go in here. All right, we're at the part of the wall where it is angled. So you basically get this board slid in as far as it will go. And then I just took a straight edge here. And as you can see, I marked that cut. And then because the baseboard actually ends sooner than the board. I'm gonna leave that little notch there to cover the gap under that molding. Quarter round is only gonna go up to this edge here with the baseboard. It is not going to go across there. So you wanna make sure you don't have any gaps exposed around this molding because you're not gonna be putting anything around it. All right, almost foiled me. This is supposed to be a 26 inch piece to start the next row right here. So I have this all cut to work, but then if I cut from this end, say 26 inches, it's going to cut this lip off. So the next board is not going to snap in snug. So we basically take these measurements and move them down and recut this pattern down further. No biggie. Eh, it's not perfect, but it will work. Now it is exactly the same length as the last 26 inch board here to continue the pattern. Once you get to the last row of boards, you'll have to cut them lengthwise to fit between the previous board and the baseboards or the wall. You can cut them to fit pretty snug because you will be tacking them down like I'm doing right here with my tack gun. And this is the only side you'll secure to the floor. The other three sides should be left floating. And try to put the tacks as close to the wall as you can so the quarter round will cover it. It was getting dark fast and I didn't have my work light, so I didn't get to record the installation of the quarter round. But I do go over that right now. We are back in the bedroom to finish up a few things, namely threshold, gotta put the threshold in. And uh, I already did put in the quarter round. As you can see, bedroom's kind of all back together already. But uh, we got the quarter round here. You basically measure your lengths cut it with a miter saw. I'll take you down and show you that. Here was my setup for cutting the quarter round. I still had it out, didn't clean up. It was snowing the day I was doing this. So I had the garage door open, had this turned so the dust would blow out. Uh, I just kind of turn it out of my way. But I left this here on purpose to show you guys. But there's where you gotta find your angle upstairs. And then, uh, you know, this miter saw is adjustable for the angles. It can actually tilt. It's a Harbor Freight Special giving me a good five years, but if you're like me, you don't do a lot of carpentry all the time. Cheap tools are worth it. Five, six years I've had this for the little job that I do around the house. Uh, what I did was order from Home Depot these eight foot long quarter round. I do have plenty of extra because I'm going to be doing another bedroom. But this is the setup I have here for cutting the quarter round. 
find your angles here. They do make tools to find angles. I just kind of eyeball and mark. I do not have tools to find angles. So piecing things in like this little last bit of flooring is a little tricky for me. Sometimes I gotta cut a couple pieces to get it just right. It doesn't have the best seams, but it's acceptable to me. And I have a Mohawk fill stick. It comes in multiple colors. Just got the platinum gray to closely match as much as possible. And this will actually fill seams. It's like a tacky wax and you push and kind of scribble over the seam and it fills it with this color wax. I'm not going to do the whole thing right now because of time, but as you can see, it starts filling that wax and then you just take a rag and wipe the excess away. You gotta push pretty hard. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And it'll start filling in your seams so it doesn't look quite as bad. This also works for filling in your finish nail holes. You just scribble back and forth until it's filled, like so. And then wipe your excess away. And now uh, your finish hole is filled. So this threshold piece is obviously too long. And what I'm going to do is actually slide it under this wood here. Normally you would put it along here, but I did cut this carpet a little short here. So I need to cover that edge, which makes this have to go underneath here, which makes the threshold have to fit underneath there a bit. So I'm gonna measure, cut this, and we'll be right back. I've got our trim piece here marked 31 and 7 eighths. Hacksaw, cut it, nail it. Oh, we got the trim piece in. Like I said, we're gonna be pushing it under that little lip there, that little piece of framing to cover that edge of carpet. And it is not perfect, but we are going to be replacing carpet very soon, so I'm not very particular about how this is going to look. But I did want to get it pushed down, held down, just for safety, so no one's tripping coming out of the room. And the nails do come with the piece of trim. So there's exactly what you need when you buy that short piece of trim. I always start in the middle and work my way out to ensure that there's no humpty dumps going to happen. And there we have the trim holding the edge of the carpet down to make it safe. And I do want to show this other piece here that's like the little puzzle piece, if you will. Because of the way you have to lay this, snap this together and lay it down, I had to leave a little bit of a gap here and then cut in and piece in a little puzzle piece. It's not perfect, but when you're just walking in the room and doing what you got to do, it's Highly unnoticeable. So those little pieces are not 100% perfect, but that's why you got a Mohawk fill stick. So that's gonna do it for this project. One more box checked before we sell the house. I've got another room to do yet with this same style flooring. Some other small projects, but this one is off the list. Like I always say, time is everything, money is a tool, and you can't afford to waste either one. Until next time, last tag. Mm -hmm.